Release the Quacken! Good morning everybody and welcome back to Goldshaw Farm. It's a lovely day here in northern Vermont. It's about 28 degrees and it's uh, snowing or sort of freezing rainish. It's like on the border between the two. The ducks are doing really good. It's a good average winter day here on the farm. But I had something I wanted to talk to you guys about. Lately on the internet, I've been reading about this uproar related to Andy, the lead singer of Mouse Rat. In just a minute, Scarecrow Boat is gonna rock it out. Please be patient while we rock out the equipment setup. You know, TV's Burt Macklin. My name is Burt Macklin. Yeah. I'm with the FBI. You know, Chris Pratt, the guy who played Star-Lord in that movie, and then that other movie, and then those other movies. Subtle, take it back. What are you doing? Well, lots of people out there are getting in an uproar right now about this article that was written by a woman over at TV Guide. Is TV Guide even a thing anymore? The new TV Guide channel, coming your way February 1st. I thought the only person who still read TV Guide was that creepy dude on the 7 train. I've never seen a beautiful lady reading the guide. Anyway, this woman, uh, Caitlin something or other, I can't remember her name off the top of my head, wrote this whole long article about how to love Chris Pratt even though he's really problematic or something to that effect. And she has like a whole bunch of reasons why she has problems with Chris Pratt. Um, I'll leave a link down below. I can't even remember them off the top of my head. My memory is horrible this morning. But regardless, the, the, the point though that I wanted to highlight is she cites one of the problematic things about Chris Pratt is the fact that number one, he likes to hunt. And number two, he has his own farm and he likes to raise and eat his own meat. Now, given that I am a guy living here in Northern Vermont trying to start my own farm, this sort of struck a chord with me. Here I am trying to raise my own food as well as food that I sell to other people. I've got to say, I'm really struggling with this idea that you could be problematic because you raise your own food. The article even pulls a quote from Chris Pratt saying how he tries to raise his lambs so that they have this really happy life and then just boom, one day they're off to the freezer. So essentially espousing the one bad day philosophy, which as you guys know, I'm a big believer in. If you're gonna eat meat, arguably the most ethical way that you could ever eat meat is to eat meat that you raised yourself, to eat meat that you knew where it came from, you know what goes into it, and, and you know how it was treated and you know how it was killed. I don't know if this Caitlin something or other is a, a vegan of some sort, and if that was the case, I could maybe see her point of view a little bit better in that, you know, she doesn't eat meat herself, and so she sees anybody who eats meat as somebody who's worthy of some moral judgment. Isn't there anything here that doesn't have meat in it? But if her objection is that he raised these animals, and now she's upset that he's killing these animals for the purpose of food, I think that is downright ridiculous. That shows such an incredible disconnect with your food system and where your food came from and, and what it all means. You know, uh, the other week I actually went to a party with some friends and it was a potluck. And so to, you know, contribute to the potluck, I ended up taking a couple of our ducks that we had in the freezer and cooking them and making these awesome duck tacos. I mean, they were really awesome. And most people were really excited to eat those duck tacos. I think the whole crock pot was empty in about 45 minutes. But there was this one friend that I had who really struggled with it and said, oh, I can't eat those. And it's not because she doesn't eat meat, but it was because, you know, she's a friend that I've been telling about my ducks and showing my videos of the ducks and pictures of the ducks on Instagram saying, yeah, look at these things. And she saw them when they were little fuzzballs and then she saw them while they do their wackiness outside. And she was really struggling with this idea of, oh my gosh, I can't eat those things now. Those are, I, I see that these are living things with a connection that I have and I, I can't ever possibly picture killing them for food. And that to me blows my mind because that to me says, you're fine with eating meat as long as you don't know where it came from and as long as you don't feel like you can acknowledge that at one point it was a living creature. 
You know, our society has a whole host of problems, many greater than this issue, but people's disconnection with food and people's disassociation with where their food comes from, I feel like is a root cause for many of our society's problems. I know that that's a little bit of a soapbox I'm standing on, but hey, it's my point of view. I just call this out for people who are out there eating meat, but don't know where their food comes from, and look at a guy like Chris Pratt and they judge him and say, oh my gosh, what he's doing and killing those animals and eating those animals is awful. Because I, I gotta say, looking at the dude from my vantage point, that's pretty much the most ethical way you can eat your food. Now, now the other thing though that I will call up on this matter is sort of the rage industry that has um, popped up as soon as this article came out. There's been a number of articles out there, um, particularly within the homesteading community, but particularly also like on places like Fox News. A TV Guide editor lambasted him as problematic. Places with a conservative viewpoint saying, look at the liberal media, they just don't get how real Americans live. Beltway elitists who have a disgust for America's heartland. And this is an attack on middle America. And but there's a middle part of the country that is rejecting this wholeheartedly. Blah, bitty, blah, 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 bitty, blah, blah. And you see this with Chris Pratt. My heart goes out to him. He's just a good red-blooded American. I will say that those reaction pieces are quite overblown too. And they even take this woman's article a bit out of context. And I fully realize that I'm probably contributing to this problem by making this video and piling on top of it all. But I'm raising this issue because I think the only way as a society that we're ever going to truly progress is if we start asking questions and challenging viewpoints and having discussions about it. I feel like in the last, I don't know, 20 years or so, we've devolved into this mass of one point of view and another point of view, and they just go at it constantly. And I don't think that that's really productive. So I, I really do bet that this woman has a point of view, and I really would like to hear it. So as a guy who's out here raising his own animals and eating his own animals, I clearly have a bias on this topic, and so I fully acknowledge that. But at the same time, I want to understand her perspective. When you say that it's problematic for Chris Pratt to eat meat that he's raised, why? Like, what is the issue? I, you know, the article, if you really parse the words in there, it doesn't get into it. So I'd love to know. And for all the people out there watching, I'm also curious to hear your point of view. Uh, what do you think about the, the story from TV Guide? What do you think about Chris Pratt? What do you think about how everybody's reacted to this piece? Uh, I'm very curious. I will be responding to comments. And if you want to learn more about Goldshaw Farm and what we're trying to do here as we try to start a farm in Vermont, uh, be sure to check out one of our other videos or you can subscribe. I will see you guys in that next video and I look forward to hearing what you have to say down below.